My name is Richard Woods. I'm the Senior Hazards Advisor for Civil Defence and Emergency Management Department at Auckland Council. There's two main ways thunderstorms form across Auckland. The MS that's sitting over the land in, in Auckland gets warmer relative to the air masses that are still over the ocean. As that cold air comes in and displaces the air, that hot air gets pushed up, and because it's colder up there, you get condensation. And depending on how much condensation there is, you'll get the formation of thunderstorms. The other type of thunderstorms that you get in Auckland is where you've got a cold front or a cold air mass moving as part of a low pressure system or any other system coming across Auckland. So you've got a, a mass of cold air that's moving across. And again, it's essentially the same process. You've got cold air pushing under a warmer air mass. It's lifting that air mass up into the atmosphere and it's, crea it's creating convection and subsequently thunderstorms. The hazards associated with uh, thunderstorms are quite varied and are not, not as appreciated, I think. Lightning, um, lightning and thunder is, is one of those that basically you get ice and water particles in the clouds coming across or any sort of air mass and because those ice particles are heavier they get sorted and so you get ice particles down in the bottom of the clouds, you get air droplets right up the top and because it's a, a larger particle it ends up getting a, a positive electric charge and those smaller particles at the top get a negative electrical charge and basically that separation electrical charge is discharged as lightning. In New Zealand we see about 50,000 lightning strikes each year from cloud to ground and that doesn't include cloud to cloud sheet lighting. Um, comparatively in Australia they have I think 5 to 40 million strikes a year and that's because it's such a convective um, warm environment. I'm not going to go into the specifics of tornado formation because in essence it's, it's not even fully understood in America where they get the large systems at the moment. Other than to point out, you have to have a couple of things happen. You have to have updraft, which is creating the convection, which is creating a thunderstorm. You then get very, very strong updraft within the thunderstorm itself. And then you have to have wind shear moving across the thunderstorm at, at the same time, which creates an element of rotation. And, and how that actually forms a, a spinning column at the bottom is not really fully understood in science at the present time, but it does, and we get them in Auckland on a small scale. This is the um, Albany tornado from May 2011, and I've picked the bottom picture particularly because I wanted you to have a look at that and see the effects of that compared to what we observed in the Hobsonville Fenorpai uh, windstorm in December. A downburst or microburst is essentially the opposite of a tornado. So you've got dry air pushing against the um, thunderstorm, you get evaporation or cooling, and then all of a sudden it's essentially the, the, the thunderstorm itself collapsing in on itself, and it's pushing vertical winds straight down onto the land mass, and what that creates is straight line winds. So rather than these rotating winds pulling cars up and then dumping them down again, you get straight line winds which pull off roofs, which knock trees down, but you don't get the, the, the same level of a destruction that you do with a, a tornado or vortex pulling air up. And just if you were to see, uh, look at a few examples of that from Hobsonville, there was a lot of destruction from these straight line winds which can get up to 150 to 200 k's themselves. Um, flash floods are the most common associated with thunderstorm hazards obviously. These images are from the last 18 months in Auckland. So we had the Glen Eden uh, event. This was uh, 3rd of July uh, up in Albany and then the Hobsonville event in December. So these things are recurrent. They do affect Auckland frequently um, and obviously we have to take um, adequate um, mitigation approaches. The last hazard associated with thunderstorms is hail. Um, Auckland, uh, this is an image uh, brought together by Niwa, Auckland gets two to four hailstorms annually, um, comparatively to the coastal regions of the South Island and, and Taranaki, which are getting up to 16 or so. And, and it's really because you're getting more thunderstorms along the west coast of the South Island in that Taranaki region than you do in Auckland. To form hail, it's associated with those strong updrafts, so you get a little bit of cooling, those water droplets turn into ice and then you get strong updrafts and it just keeps pushing those ice crystals or pushing them up and around in the thunderstorm and they collect more moisture until a point where that strong updraft can no longer fight with gravity and your hail starts falling out, out of the sky. In New Zealand we've had hailstones the size of cricket balls recorded um, and interestingly golf sized hailstones in New Zealand, golf ball sized, are actually quite frequent apparently. Um, there has been no human deaths but there's been a number of livestock and animal killed 
um, in New Zealand from Hale. And as Met Service informed me today, two goldfish in Canterbury apparently died a couple of years ago as well.